My name is Samir Khan and I'm one of the team of product managers at MapleSoft. My role is to interact with our customers and users and help them better understand our tools, technologies and services. So there's a world of math and technical computation tools out there. In the space that Maple lives in, there are tools like Mathematica, MATLAB, MathCAD and a few others. Each tool has different features, a different interface and a different interaction model. And there's some functional overlap between all of them. One plus one is equal to two in all. But after that, they start to differ and diverge along their own paths. Now, for one reason or another, people sometimes switch tools. And that's usually a combination of push and pull factors. The reason might be functionality, service, co um, service ongoing licensing costs or something else. Um, and this is a difficult decision to make, the decision to switch, because evaluating high-level mathematical tools is not simple, and the cost-benefit analysis is not always readily apparent. And once you've made that decision, it's difficult to put into practice because you have to manually translate your work over to another tool. But some people do switch because they think despite all the effort, it's worth it. As a company, MapleSoft is seeing many MathCAD users that want to evaluate Maple as a potential replacement. Some of these MathCAD users remain with MathCAD after evaluating Maple. That's because their application, their desired style of working is better suited for MathCAD. Others, however, switch uh, and uh, use Maple instead because um, they gain significantly in functionality that's important to them, or they prefer the licensing model, or they have certain surface expectations or some combination thereof. Over the last five years, MapleSoft have spoken to literally hundreds of MathCAD users who want to find out if Maple is the right fit for them. And as I said, for some it is, for others it, is, for others it isn't. Um, regardless of the reason for wanting to switch, MapleSoft work closely with these MathCAD users and support their work when they're evaluating Maple and if they decide to make the decision to switch to Maple, we support their work within Maple. So we end up learning a lot about what they do and how they want to use a product. So what are we going to talk about in this webinar? This webinar will actually examine what five typical ex-MathCAD users now do in Maple. These are MathCAD users who have evaluated Maple and have decided to uh, switch to that product. Um, for each case, we'll show you one or more Maple worksheets that represent the major themes of their work that are directly inspired by their work. And from this, we can actually draw some conclusion about what has pulled these ex-MathCAD ex users into Maple. So let's look at our cast of characters and these all represent real life people that we've interacted with over the last few years. So we're going to talk about a mechanical engineer, an aerospace engineer, an electrical engineer, an acoustics engineer and a chemical engineer. Now let's start us off with the mechanical engineer. So this mechanical engineer had used a combination of MathCAD and Excel for many years, but he wanted to switch to another math tool with programmatic flexibility for report generation and connectivity, but still offering features like natural math notation and units. His work revolved mostly around structural design, so things like frame and truss analysis. He also went to a method of distributing his design calculations as well, perhaps by converting them to PDFs. I'm going to show you two Maple applications that are typical of the type of work that he now does in Maple. Let's start off with this one. Now with every Maple worksheet I'm going to show you in this webinar, we're not gonna go into any great detail. We'll talk about the themes in the worksheet. We'll talk about broad strokes. Well, this mechanical engineer wanted to expose his equations in a manner that could be audited. He wanted to use units and dimensions in his parameters and have them flow through to the final results. He also was uh, uh, very keen on having 
a certain crispness and clarity of presentation in his final calculation documents. And he felt all of those requirements could be satisfied with Maple. So here I have a diagram and a description of the problem. Below that, I have some parameters and some units associated with them. Then I have some equations that are entered in natural math notation with things like uh, Greek letters, overline division. And at the result bottom, I have the results of my analysis. Here's another worksheet that represents major themes and concepts in the work he now does in Maple. It has many of the same principles as the previous Maple worksheet. We have units, natural math, images, text. What's unique is that this worksheet actually uses a database of the properties of structural steel shapes downloaded from the cloud-based Maple package manager. And this is something that this mechanical engineer now uses within Maple. Now, any of these two documents I've just shown you can be converted to a PDF. If I go to the file menu and select print preview, this is what the PDF would look like. It's, it's a faithful reproduction of the, uh, of the Maple worksheets. So that was the mechanical engineer. Let's move on to the next member of the cast, the aerospace engineer. This user <coughs> worked as a senior analyst in the spacecraft industry. He was actually tasked with analyzing phenomena related to propulsion, combustion, and thermodynamics. And he used a lot of thermodynamic and thermochemical data. And he really liked that this data was baked straight into Maple. It was available in computable format from within Maple. And everything I show you now is something that he used to do in MathGAD, but now does in Maple, using different techniques, using different concepts and features and functions, but the application is the same. Now, in one application, the engineer wanted to calculate the performance characteristics of a turbojet, and this is very typical of the application he now develops in Maple. He uses Maple's built-in tools for thermodynamic and thermochemical thermochemical data to compute things like enthalpies, entropy, specific heat capacities. He also uses Maple's tools for units as well. So all of these parameters have units associated with them. And these are used in a thermodynamic heat balance around the cycle, around this thermodynamic cycle. And at the bottom, we plot the thermodynamic cycle on a temperature entropy chart. Again, he liked that things like uh, this temperature entropy chart are available within Maple for a range of pure fluids and gases. In another application, the aerospace engineer now uses Maple to compute uh, combustion, temperature, and chemical composition of the exhaust gases of a rocket. And this type of work heavily relies on thermodynamic data that's available within uh, a computable format. So he uses Maple's thermophysical properties package to extract parameters like model masses, specific heat capacities, enthalpies, entropies, and so on. And he uses those properties to perform heat and mass balances and calculate things like the sonic velocity of the exhaust gases, specific impulses, characteristic, characteristic velocities, and so on. So his rationale for doing this in Maple, using equations and first principles uh, mathematical modeling was that he wanted to confirm the results of dedicated tools and all the Fortran code for rocket performance, but in a way that actually was more understandable and that exposed the equations and assumptions 
involved uh, in the analysis? Moving on to the electrical engineer. So this electrical engineer decided to switch to Maple because he needed greater flexibility with his symbolic math and faster, more memory efficient numeric math. math. After pretty in-depth evaluation, um, he felt that the kind of things that he was doing, such as analyzing responses of circuits and worst case circuit analysis were better suited to Maple. And I'm going to show you a couple of documents which are very typical of the type of work that he now does professionally within Maple. Um, let's look at analog circuit design. So this worksheet uses Maple's symbolic math tools for solving and rearranging equations. So this is the circuit that we're analyzing. This is simply an image that we copied and pasted in from another application. I then have parameter values for each of the components in my circuit. And then I have some equations. So one thing this electrical engineer really liked about Maple was some of Maple's tools for code-free analysis. So if I take an, a result like this, if I want to simplify this, all I have to do is move the mouse focus over to this equation and then go to the context panel and select the appropriate um, option. If I go down to this transfer function, let's say that I wanted to convert this into the time domain, I can do that without any syntax as well. Again, via the context panel. Now, once he developed all of his equations using Maple symbolic math tools, he wanted to produce plots of things like the phase of the system, the gain of the system, and so on. So moving on to another of his applications that he now does in Maple, worst case circuit analysis. And there are two approaches I'm going to show you. Um, the first application performs worst case circuit analysis with Monte Carlo simulations. So here we have a photovoltaic circuit. Here we have parameter values for each of the components. Each of these components has a mean value and a variance. So it's normally distributed. And we want to find out what the potential extreme values of the output voltage are, Vos. Well, we start off with a procedure, some maple code, which gives you the output voltage as a function of all the component parameters, such as the resistances, the input voltages, and so on. We then generate 1,000 random samples for each parameter using the mean and variance from uh, the table at the top. You pump them through the procedure that gives you the output voltage and that gives you 1000 values, potential values for the output value, uh, output voltage. And from that, you can calculate the mean and standard deviation of the output voltage. And you can plot the results in a histogram. So the two vertical lines either side represent two standard deviations from the mean and about 95% of the observations lie between this, uh, these two standard deviations. So that was one approach to worst case analysis, Monte Carlo simulation that this electrical engineer now uses Maple for. There is another approach Again, it's the same circuit. Again, I have a table of component values, but in this case, each parameter has a nominal value and a percentage tolerance. And the actual component parameter value can lie anywhere between the nominal value plus or minus the tolerance. And 
I want to calculate the voltage for every permutation of parameters at either end of the tolerance for each component. Again, I have a procedure that calculates the output voltage as a function of the component parameters. And I do some further analysis. I calculate extreme values for the output voltage. And then I can use Maple's tools to calculate the worst case minimum and maximum voltage. <coughs> so let's move on to the acoustics engineer. And this acoustics engineer was actually an expert in signal processing who had specialized in audio compression and processing. He was using MathGAD, but he decided to explore other solutions because of speed, memory efficiency, and basic functionality. His goal was to generate and apply filters to audio, perform time frequency analysis, remove things like low level hiss from audio, and even things like um, artificially generate uh, uh, guitar chords for stringed instruments and then add reverb through a process known as convolution. The reason he wanted to use a math tool rather than a dedicated audio processing tool is that he wanted to programmatically link the entire analysis together. So he wanted to generate things like uh, 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 synth synthesized artificial sounds of stringed instruments, apply filters to it, and then add special effects such as reverb and echo to the audio. We're going to look at a couple of worksheets which represent some of the themes in his work. So in this application, we import an audio file so within Maple, when you import an audio file, you get some information about the audio file, such as the sample rate, the number of channels, the duration of the audio file, and then you can examine the frequency contents of the audio with some tools like a, a spectrogram and a periodogram. There's a number of filter design tools within, uh, within Maple. Here we're just processing the audio with a Butterworth filter high pass Butterworth filter with a cutoff frequency of 1000 Hertz. You can then regenerate the spectrogram and periodogram and you can see that there's a significant drop off below a frequency of 1000 Hertz. This acoustics engineer also wanted to algorithmically add special effects to audio. And this uses a mathematical approach called convolution. So in this application, we simply read in two audio files the so-called dry audio, which represents the clean and altered sound, and an impulse response. You can then use Maple to convolve the dry audio with the impulse response, and write the result out to a high precision audio file. And again, using Maple's tools for frequency domain analysis, you can generate spectrograms of the audio before and after the convolution. One feature the acoustics engineer was particularly fond of was the fact that you can right click on any plot and export it to an external file. So let's finish with the chemical engineer. So 
This chemical engineer, um, she was a recent graduate, had used Mathcadet University, and when she moved into industry, she was tasked with creating interactive applications to explore various phenomena in chemical plants. And those applications needed to be deployed at relatively low to no cost. And she evaluated several tools, including the tool that she was most familiar with, Mathcad, uh, but subsequently became a Maple user. I'll show you a couple of applications that are representative of the major themes of her work. Um, this is one of her typical applications. We don't see any math or equations. That's all hidden behind the scenes. We simply have drop-down menus which allow us to change parameter values. There are text boxes that we can interact with and type in new numbers as well. And we have a button to get updated results as well. So she deploys these applications uh, to her colleagues using the Maple Player. The Maple Player is a free runtime version of Maple. Um, the concept is, is that you use your main license of Maple to create applications like this with sliders, drop down menus, buttons, and so on. Um, you can then send that application to somebody else. They can download and install the Maple Player for free and then run the application but they can't see any of the underlying code. They can change parameters and get updated results though. <laughs> this is another application that represents some of the concepts that she now implements within Maple. It's an application that gives you the most economic pipe diameter and fluid velocity given the total lifetime running costs for uh, pipes in process plants. Again, there are drop-down menus, text boxes, but here we have a collapsible section that gives you some background information about the theory behind the calculations. This is something that she was uh, particularly fond of because this allows her to hide unnecessary information and only expand it if the user needs to see it. She also wanted to create certain visualizations of chemical processes. So she wanted to create things like ternary diagrams of mixture properties. So it could be things like uh, the enthalpy or the specific heat capacity or some of the property of uh, uh, a mixture of uh, three components. So she created applications like this. Um, this ternary diagram is actually created programmatically using Maple's tools for uh, plot creation using basic visualization primitives. So there we have it. That's what five XMath CAD users are now typically doing in Maple. And from that, we can actually draw some conclusions about the pull factors that drew them into Maple. There's often a technical feature that they need. It might be free deployment, some math function, faster computation, or different kinds of visualization. Um, they want technical support that works closely with them if it's needed. And I feel the benefits outweigh the work in switching because if you're a long time user of MathGAD, if you do want to switch to Maple, you do have to get used to a different way of working and you have to unlearn some principles and learn some new ones. Um, Maple itself is a very broad tool and there are many tensions that we haven't spoken about today. Um, one suggestion I do have is that if you are a MathCAD user and you want to evaluate Maple, uh, then please speak to us. We have a very well structured evaluation process for MathCAD users. We help you evaluate Maple objectively. If we think it's the right fit for you, we'll welcome you as a user. Thank you for listening.